Welcome to week 12 of Bible Studies for Life. Boy, we're getting near the end of the quarter. Looking forward to uh, finishing up well. We're in the last week of this section on of uh, apologetic type uh, lessons. And today we look at it, you know, a question a lot of people have. Is hell real? What happens uh, when you die? If you don't know Jesus, we think, you know, we'll go to heaven. But there are a lot of different theories about uh, what happens after you die? Is it, is it a burning fire? Is it uh, just kind of annihilation where you cease to exist completely? So we're going to look at some uh, thoughts here from Paul in his letter to the Thessalonians, his second letter to the Thessalonians. So before we do that, if you haven't already, subscribe. Hit the little subscribe button, like, comment. If you've got questions, put those in there and share it with somebody else. We appreciate it if you do that. And then if you want to help support what we're doing, you can go to this website here at give.exposedtochrist.com and help support our ministry of teaching as well as the mission work that we're doing. Okay, let's look at this first chapter of 2 Thessalonians. We ought to thank God always for you, brothers and sisters, and rightly so, since your faith is flourishing and the love each one of you has for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast about you among God's churches about your perseverance and faith and all the persecutions and afflictions that you are enduring. Okay, typical entry to one of Paul's letters, and he is uh, has great thanks, right? He does this often, thanking God for the church and his prayer for the church, right? But look at some of the things that he points out about them that are just kind of helpful to us, right? You have faith that is flourishing. You love each one. Um, your love for one another is increasing, Right, And he says, we boast about you. Paul says, I, I talk about what's going on in your church when I'm at other churches. When I'm at other places, I talk about what God is doing among the Thessalonians, right? About your perseverance and faith, because they are enduring persecutions and afflictions. They are going through hard times, and it's not easy to be a believer in this town, but they are following the Lord. They're being faithful. They're persevering through difficult times. And he wants them to know, look, man, I'm bragging about you. I'm talking about what God is doing among you. It is clear evidence of God's righteous judgment that you will be counted worthy of God's kingdom for which you also are suffering. This is great, right? God's righteous judgment. Right. You will be counted worthy of God's kingdom for which you are suffering. You will enter into God's kingdom. You're suffering for that. You will enter in, right? Since it is just for God to repay with affliction those who afflict you and to give relief to you who are afflicted along with us, this will take place. Okay, so right, it is just to punish the ones afflicting you and give relief to you, right? This will take place at the revelation of the Lord Jesus from heaven with his powerful angels when he takes vengeance with flaming fire on those who don't know God and on those who don't obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. All right. So he says there will be a judgment, a final judgment, right? At the revelation of the Lord Jesus from heaven when the Lord comes, right? He will take vengeance. This is vengeance is mine, says, saith the Lord, right? He will take vengeance with flaming fire on those who don't know God and on those who don't obey the gospel. Okay, look, Scripture is clear that if you don't make a decision to give your life to Christ, accepting the work that God has done through his son Jesus, that you will suffer the consequences for that. Here he talks about part of this is, is he will take vengeance with flaming fire on those. There will be a horrible, painful dreadful time, right? For those who don't know God and those who don't obey the gospel. These are one and the same. Those who obey are those who know. Those who know him obey. Those who don't know don't obey. Those who don't obey show they don't know. You don't know the Lord, you're going to suffer the consequences for that. That is very clear. There is no um, escape from this judgment. There is no um, lack of suffering. There is suffering that happens, right? Then look, they will pay the penalty of eternal destruction from the Lord's presence and from his glorious strength on that day when he comes to be glorified by his saints and to be marveled at by all those who have believed because our testimony among you was believed. Here's the key passage, I think, in this that we need to see, okay? Eternal destruction from the Lord's presence. All right. Now, what does that mean? With 
think about think about this if the word eternal is not there what if it's just destruction from the lord's presence well you're going to be destroyed from his presence you're going to cease to exist right but it is eternal destruction it is there that word is that phrase is eternal destruction now what does that mean what does it mean to be eternally forever destroyed well some say it could mean that you are destroyed forever never to come back but that wouldn't make sense right you just say destroyed there is no sense of a, of a revitalization of a judged person there's no idea that that would ever happen this eternal destruction seems to me to say or describe a being eternally separated from the Lord that you will suffer um, you will have consciousness apart from the presence of God. This is the definition of hell. Hell is to be in a place where God is not. And you see, there is no place on earth where God is not, right? God is everywhere. He, he is moving across the earth always, constantly. He is always everywhere. But there is a place he has chosen not to be, and that is hell. You are eternally destroyed from the Lord. You are eternally removed from his presence. You have, you have no hope in that place, and you know it. That's hell. I mean, that's literal hell, right? right? You are destroyed eternally from his presence and from his glorious strength. You don't have any hope. This is the real place of hell. On that day, when he comes to be glorified by his saints, there is clearly a separation, right? The saints are going are gonna to glorify him. Um, we're going to be in his presence. We know that. But those who do not know him, those who are not believers, will be forever out of his presence. Not forever in the sense of they will no longer exist, but forever in that they will exist and not be in his presence. That is, I mean, it is hell, Right? In view of this, he says, we always pray for you that our God will make you worthy of his calling and by his power fulfill your every desire to do good and your work produced by faith so that the name of our Lord Jesus will be glorified by you and you by him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. He continues to talk about the way he prays for them. Let me just say a little side note here. It's, I love reading and seeing the ways that Paul prays for the church. And so you see, here he's praying that God will make you worthy of his calling and fulfill your desire to do good and the work produced by faith, that God would, would pour through you his spirit so that you may do the things that I know you want to do, that you would be faithful to him and produce these good works, right? So that he'll be glorified by you. And then you by him, which speaks of eternity, right? Entering into eternity is this glorification that God promises to us one day we will be with him, right? All according to his grace, not because of your works that God's going to say, you're so great, I'm bringing you up, but because you have been faithful and you are mine, I'm glorifying you. This is, there is a clear difference, and I don't think there's any way you can read scripture without seeing there's a clear difference between heaven and hell, between being forever in the presence of God and being forever without the presence of God. Well, that's not where you want to be because that is literally hell. And that's not where you want to be. There are times here on this earth when we feel like we may be in a, in, in a scene. We may be going through something where we say, I don't, I don't see God there at all, how horrible it is. And just know as bad as that may seem at that moment, that is eternity. And still God was there in that moment. He is not in hell. Don't be there, right? Thanks for watching. I hope it's helped. God bless you. If you've got questions or comments, put those in the comments below. Subscribe. If you haven't already, hit the little subscribe button, like the video. I appreciate it if you do that. Share with others. Thanks for doing that. We'll see you next week. Thanksgiving's coming up. Looking forward to it. All right.